guys, this is Philip, and we are doing another episode of ZZ Hangout. This time we are welcoming Herman on vacation, Christopher and Juliet from Italy. And we are glad that we can be chatting about their new music project and also a little bit about the history of his music and other things related to music or life. So maybe first question like what is permanent vacation how how that came up okay so permanent vacation is a, a pretty new project we started during the first lockdown in italy um we we'd worked a little bit on some of my own music and the things took a bit of a different direction and we thought it deserved a new new name different thing entirely Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it started out with Chris inviting me to do some vocals for Lake Michigan, and we really enjoyed that. We had a good time with that, and we just thought that maybe we could create kind of our own project as a result of it, something dealing with some different styles, different types of music, mm -hmm. and here we are. Uh-huh. Different influences mainly, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so, what was the plan from the start? Like, what, was it to record an album, or was it just like to have fun? Or there was there was really no plan. <laughs> no. There was no. no plan involved. Um, it was just a matter of, yeah. As Chris mentioned, we we're now in our third lockdown in Italy. Um, neither of us are Italian as you can gather <laughs> um, but we're both living in italy we we met in rome and uh, we've been this is now as i said our third lockdown so we're spending a lot of time at home and in that time we're finding a creative outlet through creating music together and just playing and making things so that's kind of how we got Sure. To where we are. I guess the, the plan, yeah, like, like Juliet said, there wasn't really a plan. Things rolled into place naturally. We had a couple of songs which we thought, okay, this this isn't like Michigan. This is a new thing. This is like a 50-50, completely collaborative new project. Um, let's see what happens. Then by the time we had a couple more, we thought, okay, let's make an EP. And things kind of snowballed from there. It it built up steam it picked up momentum as as we wrote the first few songs really and we realized that it was not just like a little let's try this it, it became more of a full-time project really yeah mm -hmm. so do you think that if there was no lockdown there would be no permanent vacation <laughs> no I, th I think there would be but i think it maybe would have taken a little more time <laughs> That's I think fair. it would have, yeah, yeah. I, I think it would have been a bit more like, oh, yeah, music, whatever. It's right. fun to jam. I it mean, yeah. oh, sorry. I mean, from, from my situation, obviously, Chris has been doing music. He's been doing Lake Michigan for, what, 10 years now? 11, 10, 11 years. 10, yeah. 11. Who's counting? Um, Who is counting? Exactly. And uh, <laughs> I, I haven't really been making music. I mean, I haven't been making music for this project um other than like for me playing music is more like jam sessions late at night on somebody's rooftop drinking some beers playing random bullshit together that's more my kind of experience with music so i think yeah the lockdown has provided us the opportunity to record and to try to make more refined mm -hmm. songs um to really focus honestly it's been yeah it's been kind of meditative really the this project for me anyway for over the last year it's been really therapeutic and like a, a happy place to come to definitely yeah so for you for you chris yeah you've been doing your music project for a while so what is the biggest like change for you? Like in definitely the sound is different or like kind of the yeah. the style, but what for you oh. personally is something different? 
Um, so Lake Michigan was always very much a solo thing. I tried a couple of times to do it with friends and it was always nice, but it never, it never really clicked. It never really worked the same way because it felt a little too personal and a little too private to do with other people. So this project for me has shown me the, the values and the beauty of collaborating with another person completely in like a 50-50 way. Like we, we work on the lyrics together, we work on the melodies together. We like Juliet will like pick up the guitar and like do something like a little thing on the guitar and be like, it should sound like this, make it like this. Or like, we'll do like something on the keyboard and it will just kind of blossom from there. So it's, it's been a much more uh, free and I guess like relaxing and organic process. It's been less, uh, there's, there's less pressure. There's less of a heavy thing attached to it. Um, it's, it's much more liberating, definitely. And it's great to, to make music with someone that you share ideas with, right? And, and, and that you have the same motivations behind creating, I guess. So, so do, do you think it's easier for you to make music like this? <laughs> <laughs> we, so this is a funny question because this morning we, um, we, we've been working on some new stuff. Uh, we are experimenting more with some electronic material and it's, it's taken a lot of time and it's taken a lot of effort to find our way of doing this. But we had, we had a pretty intense morning of recording yeah. this new song. So easier, I'm not sure, but it's more, it's more fulfilling and it's more enriching. Definitely. I would say. We definitely don't agree about everything. <laughs> Let's just Lo say that. Lots of things. Yeah. Some things. No. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So for you, Juliet, like, uh, how, how do you see, like, do you feel like Lake Michigan is still present in permanent vacation or is it something that you, you, you kind of see like there is a huge difference and it, it, it is not affecting. You know what? Um, I, he's still doing Lake Michigan. He's still working on this project. He's still making music for it. And like, even this morning he was playing something really pretty on the guitar when I woke up and I was like, wow, this is amazing. And he was like, yeah, this is going to be my next like Michigan song. And I was like, what? <laughs> You're using that for like Michigan? I was a little bit jealous. Um, <clears throat> but I, I think that actually what we're trying to do now is we're still finding our sound and we're, we're different people with different ideas. And so most of what we've done thus far has been vocally speaking it's it's been predominantly my voice um but now we're trying to to find a way to incorporate the two just because we understand that there's a lot to be done with it considering we have very contrasting voices he's he's very <clears throat> low very baritone very um he has his voice and <clears throat> mine is, is a lot higher. So uh, I think I wouldn't say that Lake Michigan is so prevalent in the project that we're doing, I don't think so. but maybe now we're starting as we continue to grow, as we continue to understand what we want to sound like, we are finding a space to include both voices mm -hmm. and, um, I'm also finding a space to be more present in the instrumentation of what mm -hmm. we're doing. So I think now as we, as we grow, we're starting to merge things a little bit more. Mm -hmm. It's more of a balance. Sure. Yeah, so, so for you, like, what is your biggest influence for the permanent vacation, like sound wise or, or just like, like, is there something that you see as maybe some uh, goal you want to reach or some other bands that you look up, up to that are kind of like, what do you want to do with I this? Think, I think when we started, we were trying to be a little bit more like folk based. Right. And also when we started, 
we had done a, a trip to Sicily and we climbed Mount Etna and we were like really in touch with nature and things like this. It was very rootsy. And very <laughs> yeah, really rootsy. But in touch with Earth. <laughs> now we're kind of we're kind of moving away from that. Right. Um, I I've always really enjoyed doing like ukulele covers of rap songs like taking kind of like really um harsh and aggressive lyrics and kind of making them sound like really syrupy and sweet while playing the ukulele which is obviously a very high-pitched instrument um so i am i am finding us as chris said we're starting to like delve into a little bit more of electronic sounds Definitely. there's there's more of like a r and solely pop hip-hop influence on the, the new things that we're working on at the moment. Sure. Um, so, yeah, yeah that, that's where like, right now. We like Sid Barrett. Of course. We like Billie Eilish. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we... Joni Mitchell, like classic, Mitchell. classic 70s folk things. Yeah, also. of course. For me, obviously, there, there's the whole... The whole whole host of bedroom pop that I've listened to for a long long time and that will always influence me Alex G, Elvis to Presley, uh, Coma Cinema, uh, Spencer Radcliffe, all of these things will always uh, find a way into the sound of whatever project I'm doing for sure. It's, I can't help it, it's, uh, this music is, is what has affected me the most so it's always present a bit but we're definitely branching out in a bigger way at the moment, I think. Mm -hmm. So do you find it like hard for you, Chris, like to kind of move to different direction completely than your previous music or? Sometimes it's not hard. Sometimes I find myself playing the same kind of predictable chord patterns that I naturally would have gone to every time I've written a song over the last like 10, 11 years. I have similar kind of modes, similar ways of doing things. So sometimes it's it takes a bit of an effort to tell myself to stop, to be like, okay, I can play this in a different way. I can think about this in a different way. But it's definitely, it's liberating and it's freeing to have these other influences and to have these other types of music that I've always enjoyed find their way into what I'm playing more because that hasn't happened before. It's been like, okay, this is the kind of music I play. This is the other music that I listen to. But now the two emerging, which is nice. It's exciting. Sure. Yeah. So, for example, lyrically, like, what what is your like kind of background for the lyrics? Like, where where did you like like what what is the inspiration? Like, what what are the stories or how how, how the process is like? Okay. So, um, in terms of our lyrics. I I first and foremost label myself as a writer. So I've been blogging for a little while and I I studied journalism at university. Like I've I've always first and foremost expressed myself creatively through writing. And I think that it's been interesting um, writing songs now for the first time, really, um, and finding lyrics for that. And yes, yeah, some of it is personal, but also we do like to get a little bit creative with themes and ideas. So maybe as we mentioned, the stuff that we first came out with our first EP, Blue Moon, that was um, very, folk based and that was a little bit more confessional mm -hmm. style of writing because that was um kind of some ob observations that we had made while we were in sicily and in fact on um a love song for everyone one particular song called trash beach which is a, a ukulele led song those are those are actually words that I had written when we were in Sicily on a beach um, in Pequino and kind of just a type of poem, if you will. It was like a, a diary poem. Sure. Right? And it wasn't until later on 
when we've been playing around with instruments and playing around with something on the ukulele and then we're kind of like okay we need like lyrics and I just opened an old notebook came across this poem and we just it just went together kind of nicely so in that case that's a little bit more confessional but some of the other stuff has been like Loosely, really random random yeah yeah, yeah. yeah random storylines that we kind of think up and talk about together or right. maybe we were influenced by like a film we had seen or generally there's there's like a nugget of an idea at the start be it from a film be it from an experience and it kind of escalates usually in a pretty stream of consciousness way Often we have to edit things down. Like we'll 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 write things just by sitting at home. We'll like have a phone, press record on the voice record. Mm. We'll go for like 10 minutes and just like play a bunch of stuff. And then a couple of days later, we'll say, okay, like let's listen back to that and see if anything makes sense. <laughs> That's actually specifically what happened with Pedestrian, sure, which yeah. is also uh, a track from a album. love song for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, that was just us after a long day of working at home. We just decided to jam. And when we do it, we just, we hit record on our phone, on one of our phones and see what, if we can come up with some ideas. And that was almost verbatim <laughs> an idea yeah. that we had during a jam session, so. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, so how was the process for like the latest album like how long did it take to make and like how how it was shaping up because i know that uh, i know that i was i was there for the whole process but maybe like kind of mm -hmm. to audience a little bit explain it like, um, yeah. i i guess around christmas we 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 figured out that we were making an album that was the period that right. we were like, okay, this is going to be a slightly bigger collection of songs. Even though a couple of the tracks, uh, Carousel and Trash Beach, a little bit older. For yeah. around Christmas, we we had this idea. We went down a couple of different directions. We thought at one point that the album would be like half electronic, half acoustic. That didn't really happen. No. <laughs> no. We um, decided to separate those things. Sure. It was, it wasn't so much as, okay, now we're making an album, this will be one track, this will be another track. It's been a vague idea that we were going to make an album for a little while. And we started to piece it together, honestly, pretty late in the day, like when we'd almost finished recording everything, we, we thought, okay, now this is probably what the album is going to be. Let's see how it works. Let's see the order. Um, accidental sounds bad. I don't want to say accidental. Mm -hmm. I don't know what, what different... Well, I think like, if I can put it in real terms for you, Chris was basically like, we're going to make an album. And I was like, oh, okay. So we're going to make no, an album that's now. that's not how it happened. Really? And uh, yeah, it was a manifestation of the will of Chris that Chris has. <laughs> and we just kind of went for it and... <laughs> Yeah, during Christmas break, that was our second lockdown in Italy. So um, we were at home a we lot. We hit it pretty hard. And, and, that's, that and that's when we started making the electronic music. I guess you can imagine how that might happen. You're like locked at home and suddenly you start making electronic music. <laughs> right. You're like everything kind of becomes a bit of a trance. Um, <laughs> that stuff is is a side. That is that's not on, on That's not on the album, Yeah, of that's course. on hold. Um, but yeah, Chris, Chris was like, we're going to make an album. So we started making the songs. And then as we got closer to the date, um, more songs needed to be made. So we, we made them, but uh, <laughs> the final song that we made is actually the song that I'm the most proud of, which Me is too. welcomed. It's the first track, um, on it. And for me, that's kind of the best representation of I think the sound that we're searching for the sound that we would like to to be recreating so I think so I think so too it's a little more textural it's a little poppier but in a smart way I think it's less like sad bedroom folk music 
um, has some other elements going on. It's a very sentimental like, song for me, is. lyrically speaking. Sure. It's really a love song to Rome. A lot of the lyrics, maybe if you were a person our age who who lived in this city, um, they might mean something more to you. So yeah, for me, that's, that's a great one. Mm. Yeah, so, so the album is out already. So, oh, so do you have any like any feedback? I know that might be a little bit too soon for it, but like overall, what, what is your feel after the release? How do you feel after after the release of the album? I feel I feel great about it, but in the same way that I I experience things as I as I write things as well, like. I really have my eye towards the next thing. Um, I don't know. You you feel a bit differently, don't you? Mm, look, so I I usually feel the same as this. Maybe even in a more brutal way. Like I often when I release a like Mission album, I have already forgotten how to play half of the songs that were on it. So I'm like, okay, fine, done what's the next thing but with this I feel a little more sentimentally towards it I'm and I'm I'm like oh let's like practice the songs from the album because it only came out a week ago and we need to like keep this stuff in our heads because because it's great but I do have the other eye on the next release too we we've already started recording for whatever's going to come next and I'm already excited for the genre changes and the different influences that will come into that but I'm, I'm really proud of the album I think it's it's a pretty complete essay on the last year of life yeah. in this city during all these lockdowns during all this crazy uncertainty I think it's a really for me it's really emotional to listen to it it's yeah it's yeah very raw. and I mean I'm really new to the music world uh, as new as you can be music world yeah this is the music world isn't it it is we're in the music people world. making and producing music yeah that's the music world for me um and i'm new to it uh welcome thank you but i i think something re re i can't speak for chris but i think something nice about this project being kind of like as new as I am to the music world, it means that we aren't like restrained or bound by anything. So I think that we can continue to experiment and try things. And it's not like anybody is going to think like, oh, well, this is Lake Michigan. And when I listen to Lake Michigan, I expect to hear this. Um, so because it's not that, we have a, a level of freedom with what we're making. And I think sure. we're going to utilize that to the best of our abilities, so. Mm -hmm. So for you, Chris, uh, is it easier to record music now than it was like 10 years ago or when you started Lake Michigan? Or is it is it is it taking you more like kind of your like maybe taking it more seriously than you were i'm definitely taking the recording process more seriously now um i made a bunch of stuff before in like stupidly simple ways like a, a couple of albums with like a, an iphone 3 and that was it. it was fine it was done um it was very much a learning curve and it was something that i was just doing as i went along and figuring out as i went along which was beautiful it was a, it's a different thing. It's a more raw and fresh thing. But now I feel more confident in terms of production. Uh, I put a lot of effort into mixing things and, and thinking in a, in a more thorough way about how things will sound. So I would say then it was easier, but it was also less fulfilling and less satisfying because it was more of just an emotional cathartic process of, I have these songs, press record, the songs are finished. Now it's like, okay, we wrote this thing. How can we make it sound the best that it can possibly be? Uh, let's take some time over it. So now it's a bit more complicated and it's a bit longer, but it's more rewarding, definitely, I would say. Yeah, I think even like since the beginning of when of we, we started yeah. this, yeah. it's 
starting to take more and more time to produce a song before it was like oh yeah we have this song like record like okay the song is done now mix it whatever but now now we're definitely we get the idea we record kind of a demo we listen to it we think about it we sound things for quite a while we make a lot of changes we think about like the pronunciation of certain words in the song like we're getting very like specific about it and i think that's a good thing so i think so too yeah so so you've been uh, saying that basically the lockdown was was a good thing for you so so what what might happen after that after that like do you plan to play shows or you know like do you think you will still have enough time to kind of record more music or like yeah i'm sure the, I'm, yeah. I'm sure we'll find time to record. I and think to make we stuff, certainly so. will. Yeah. Um, a lot of the lockdown has also meant kind of being stuck in the same place. And both of us are very interested in travel and we're both from different places. So kind of as soon as it's possible to start moving again, um, we're looking to spend some time in the States, spend some time in England, possibly travel around other places. Obviously, once we've been vaccinated and once travel is possible and we we absolutely want to play shows, we definitely. Mm-hmm. I think right now the main point is just making music and make as much as possible. Yeah, we're probably. making music. We're really yeah. enjoying it. It's really fulfilling for us. And we would love to play shows. If people want us to play shows, we will definitely do that. Anywhere, anywhere, yeah, everywhere. Of really. course, wherever we might be, yeah. we look for any opportunity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So right now you are in Italy, like what's the story behind that like why Italy <laughs> if you are not Italian <laughs> we are not Italian as as anyone might Definitely have gathered not. by now um in spite of the Aperol spritz I yeah I see that <laughs> homemade I, spritz yeah, yeah Sorry, it's okay <laughs> I have been here for almost five years now in Rome and um I I came here kind of suddenly and then ended up staying for my job. I teach English as a second language and I really love my job and I really love my company. So that's kind of what's what's kept me here up until now. And uh, Chris? Oh, for me, okay. I, I moved to Rome shortly before lockdown number one. Um, and I wasn't really sure whether I would stay. I wasn't really sure what the plan was. I I found a job in the same company as Juliet. That's mm-hmm. that's how we met. We teach together. We work together. And I very quickly grew to love a lot of things about the city and a lot of things about the country. Hmm. And honestly, then the lockdown happened and been a little bit trapped since then but <laughs> it's it's a beautiful we place. have kind of been trapped. yeah it's a beautiful um, place to be trapped in. yeah there are um, worse places definitely we we're lucky enough to have a very small but very nice and cozy apartment that we have just for the two of us yeah and it's like a, a safe space really and it's for me it's it's been a big part of why i've stayed sane throughout this whole experience Right, Definitely. because I, I think like actually uh, the original plan, both of us had intended to leave last summer. It's true. And yeah, exactly. Yeah. It was this time last year that we went into the first lockdown and that was for a month. And obviously it being the first one and this kind of being like a new thing, it was it was really scary and really confusing because we weren't allowed to to go outside you could only go outside like to go to the grocery store so it was really it was confusing and yeah so we, we're still but, here yeah we, we decided <laughs> to stick it out for another year just to figure things out a little bit um and now we're, we're getting to the end of that year and we're ready to 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 go 
yeah to move on to other things <laughs> not because we don't love italy just Italy's just great. for personal yeah. reasons yeah yeah so, mm. so how do you find italians or how do you find living in different countries Italians, wow okay i i love italy yeah I, as i said i've been here for almost five years and there's a reason for that and i it was my first experience even leaving my country i'm from the united states um and it's a bit it's a, a tricky place right we we don't have the same opportunity as europeans where it's it's pretty easy to travel to a foreign country even from a young age if you live in europe um, or other parts of the world but the united states is a little bit isolated and uh, it's expensive to leave, honestly. So coming to Italy was my first time leaving the country and it was absolutely terrifying and exhilarating at the same time. And I, I really fell in love with Rome and that's why I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> it's challenging, of course, it's absolutely challenging. Um, I, I wouldn't say that Italians, you know, speak English very well. That's kind of why we have jobs. However, <laughs> that's why we were able to come um, here and work. Right. right, and I and I think, although I think, if you're if you want to travel to or live in a foreign country, um, that's definitely your responsibility to learn so, the language. Course, you can yeah, never yeah. expect to go somewhere and that people will yeah, just speak, speak your English. language. It's going to be easy. Yeah. yeah so we're, we're fortunate in the sense that we, we have our jobs and I'm very thankful for that. But coming here with, with zero Italian, um, skills thing. yeah it was it was quite mm. a whirlwind yeah. and yeah for me it's yeah. objectively it's a beautiful country it, i i don't know how anyone could deny the beauty of this country and rome of course rome is unfortunately one one of the only places i've been able to explore in italy i haven't had much opportunity to explore the rest of the country but I find the people generally great, um, at times very stubborn, mm -hmm. and difficult to penetrate, but there's a very down-to-earth, uh, rustic and charming spirit to the way of life here and to the attitudes of people here. I'm very grateful for it, definitely. Mm -hmm. so, so next stop is the United States or? Probably, yeah. But Yes. Obviously, depending on how how able we are to travel in the coming months, the loose plan is go to the States, go to England, and then we'll see. Then we'll go somewhere. That's a loose plan. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I'm 100% going to the States in the summer. Um, right now, we're kind of seeing what the travel bans say. Um, as of right now, Chris can't actually travel there. So fingers crossed that something changes. Yeah. But in any case, we'll figure it out. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I was planning to go to States this summer, but oh, really? Yeah, yeah but You're... not not happening. So Wait, but where were you planning on going? Um probably like East Coast. But I don't know, like, uh, I wanted to do Z-Tips Festival there. <laughs> That'd oh. be amazing. Yeah, but I had to postpone it, so. Yeah, maybe for another year. Yeah, I think that will be more reasonable. So, yeah, I miss traveling as well. It's It sucks. Um, oh. It's really complicated. Yeah, especially just living abroad during this moment and trying to navigate, like, okay have to go home how do i how do i swing this um cool so uh right now like what is your plan like okay so you will record next album like before summer or like what what what, what do you have in mind with the new project? honestly maybe what so yeah. right now as we said like during lockdown number two during christmas break we, we really uh, started experimenting with electronic music and we have a couple of songs that we oh 
<laughs> so glad that happened. <laughs> We, we started experimenting with some electronic music and we figured out that it didn't have pl a place on the album that we were making, <laughs> no, um, definitely but didn't, definitely didn't. now we want to revisit all of that stuff we and maybe improve on it. Yeah, yeah. Like we, we've just finished the vocal recording for a new song today, which is electronic based and which we're both feeling really positively about. Definitely. So we'd like to revisit that other stuff see what we can do with it see if we can make some changes and i i imagine probably before summer we'll have something i reckon i reckon we'll probably have a single out from it pretty soon um, yeah and then yeah early summer i guess we'll, we'll probably be ready to release something else mm -mm. we're on a pretty yeah i don't know <laughs> i don't know what i'm trying to say yeah there is momentum yeah on there's momentum the right track it's nice making stuff and then it's just nice releasing it and it's like if you like it if you want to listen to it awesome you know if not it's whatever okay. like fine. we're just we're making stuff because it it feels good it's healing and it's exciting yeah. and it's therapeutic that's the point yeah what about you, Chris? Like with Lake Michigan, do you plan to do something new with that? Or yeah, I am. Um, I don't really know what I'm doing with this project anymore. Though honestly, it's like it's a very old thing, and I feel like I've explored lots with it. I think I'm releasing a single next week. I I mean, I, yesterday I announced in the form of a meme that I'm going <laughs> to release a single next week, so I, I should do. Um, people take memes very seriously people do take so... memes seriously yeah, yeah I can't, you might the, have to see that through right the meme police are going to come for me if not <laughs> so no anyway so one new song hopefully will be on the the spring compilation which is great that's something strange that's something a bit different that's something like kind of orchestral it's like a garage band symphony i don't really know <laughs> what i did with it but i'm, I'm happy with it it's nice and yeah, uh, very, very slowly and steadily, I'm putting together a new album. Some of it will be more kind of ambient and shoegazy. There'll be some classic like folk, quiet, like bedroom stuff. And there'll be some more electronic and classical, almost like orchestral things going on. So yeah, I've definitely thrown any pressure or expectancy with that project out of the window as a result of doing permanent vacation now that project for me is very much just like i maybe i like wake up one day and i feel a bit like tired or kind of bad or a bit stressed i'm just gonna like put the headphones on make something and it's done it's like a therapy thing more than a functional music project now which is nice so, so music soon. yes <laughs> excited and That's uh Maybe last oh, two questions, like, mm -hmm. so, so the name Permanent Vacation, how did that happen? Or what is the story behind that? So that's, uh, okay. There's a, a film by a director called Jim Jarmusch, who I've been a fan of for a long time. You're like, you're into a fair few of his films, a right? A few, yeah, seen. like a few. Mm-hmm. We had started making some stuff for this new project uh, late last summer, and we went to an outdoor screening of one of his films, which is called Permanent Vacation. Uh, we watched the film. We got talking about the name of the film after, and we thought, like, actually, this, this would kind of really work for what we're doing. Mm -mm. Because, of course, we're not... We are not from Italy and we live here. That's not to say we are on vacation because neither of us are particularly financially backed up in life. We both have to work full time and we have to work hard and we have to support ourselves. So it's a bit of a tongue in cheek yeah. play on us living in a different country. Right, because I think that and maybe... And traveling and wanting to move you know, places. Right, yeah, maybe sure. on Instagram or to our friends or to anybody 
paying attention, it could seem like a vacation living in this beautiful Mediterranean country. Right. That's, that's not the um, point. And the point is we work full time. I work, I work 50 hours a week and I'm exhausted. <laughs> and so like, it, as he said, it's a tongue in cheek thing. Like it's a permanent vacation in the sense that you are living your life and spending your time somewhere away from home but at the end of the day like you're still working work is work no matter where you are um so yeah I think that's a good mm -hmm. summary I think that's a good explanation of the sure. name mm -hmm. cool. <laughs> I, I thought that it might be a little bit connected to to, to the film. playing in, in different country uh, yeah, 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 uh, yeah 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 huh definitely for sure mm -hmm. yeah so so the last question is a little bit of a recommendation. Like if you would name three bands or music projects at this moment, like you really enjoy listening to, what would it be? You can say three yours and uh, Julie yours as well. Uh, three separate, six. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. I'm going to go first so he doesn't steal mine. Yeah. But I, <laughs> go, go <for it. laughs> I will first say, honestly, maybe based more on our electronic stuff that we're trying to do Billie Eilish just because we watched her documentary earlier this week and we're both just kind of like uh taken aback by how incredible she is as a musician and her brother who is produces and helps her write a lot right. of the things that she does she's someone she's someone that's that gets written off as being like a kind of like empty pop artist but yeah. she is insanely young and insanely and talented very talented her yeah. voice is Smells. something else mm -hmm. um okay for me personally as i mentioned before which chris brought up to me the other day sid barrett because i think like our kind of goal is to do a psychedelic acid type pop based um sound mm -hmm. would you say and so I've always loved Sid Barrett's like solo stuff aside from Pink Floyd, like the things that he's done individually. Mm -hmm. And my, my third one is just going to be my kind of folk queen, Joni Mitchell, <laughs> as, as Chris also mentioned before, she, she's just someone who will always be an inspiration to me and, and guide the way I would like my songs to sound like mm -hmm. for you. For me, I am um, first. I'm gonna go with Rapt, who is, of course, a Z Tapes artist. Of course, someone that you're very familiar with, Philip. Um, and he is an incredible guitarist and makes incredibly atmospheric and moody, beautiful music. And you should listen to it. Whoever you are watching this video, you should listen to it. He's a very talented guy. Um, number two. I am gonna, ha, this is difficult, okay. I'm gonna slip in the middle of someone a little more mainstream. Um, I'm gonna go with Mac Miller, who is an artist that Julia introduced me to. That being the sort of music I was never really never really into. Um, but his, his last album, which was released after he died, uh, is just gorgeous, it's incredible, it's heartbreaking, it's, R&B, it's pop, it's, but it's smart, it's introspective, it's, it's beautiful. It's an incredible album. That's a big influence on what I'm doing guitar-wise at the moment. And also, I am going to say Port Lucian as another great Z-Tapes artist who I enjoy very much at the moment. Wraps up my three. <laughs> That's my three. <laughs> Okay, I think he, I think he likes Z tapes musicians. <laughs> Don't tell Philip. <laughs> yeah, we've been friends for for a very long time, so it's like it's been a while. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. You know, he has like he has the exact same hat that you have. <laughs> oh yeah. And so I. I wear it. He doesn't wear it, but I wear it. I don't look yeah. good in hats, Philip. Is the point? I love the hat, and I'll always keep the hat. Sometimes I like I wanna, but it's such a cool hat. Looks good on hat. you too. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I'm just wearing it because uh, the the light was like a, a glossy on my head. <laughs> 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 but yeah, 
people buy this, buy this. Buy the hat. <laughs> buy the hat. Such a <laughs> good hat. Match plug. Yeah. yeah. I enjoyed it. Okay. Thank you so much for for this talk. It was fun. I really enjoyed it. And I hope you will be making more music and hopefully we will release it on some tapes. So and um, I wish you good luck with the moving. Hopefully it will work out. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Good luck okay. with it. Thanks, Thanks always. Yeah. So guys, thank you for watching this episode and I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. And I hope to see you at the next episode. So be see you soon. Bye bye. Bye. Take bye. care. Bye.